Wow, it has been a long time since I've seen that name on my bench, guys, and you knew it was only a matter of time until I got myself one of these 124th scale electric 4x4s. I have been waiting. This is obviously not too new of news because lots of people have been getting these already. Um, I had mine on order for quite some time, but the supplier that I was buying mine from didn't get their order in time. And of course, then the shipment got damaged in the way. But you know what? I think the actual truck itself is just fine. Look at this, guys. If you haven't seen it before, I was totally intrigued by this new 124 scale model from Axial. Why? because of the size of the tires and of course because I've been an avid user of the SCX lineup uh, for a very many years in fact most of my YouTube career in fact my very first scale truck uh, well the scale truck was the SCX 10 um, my first axial crawler was the axial scorpion if you guys remember that from all those years ago the AX 10 uh, that was a rock crawler that came with a kind of scale body but not really and then they came out with the SCX-10, which is a very popular uh, off-road trail truck that we used for years and years. In fact, the Beast, uh, some of you may remember that truck. I had it on the recent collection video I did of all my uh, trail trucks that I've put back there, um, was an SCX-10 as well. But I know you guys have already done a lot of your research. Most of you on this channel are big, avid enthusiasts already, and you've probably already checked these out. But I have not had a great mini uh uh, crawler for quite some time. In fact, the last one we had were the hard bodies uh, from RC four wheel drive. Now, I did used to use the uh, small low C trucks as well, but they stopped making them many, many, many years ago. Glad to see that another competitor has stepped up to the plate to offer it, and I'm glad to see it was Axial. So let's open it up and see what's inside the box. There we go. Not really surprised to see damage on a box. At least it's only in the corner. It is Christmas time at the time of this filming, almost. Happy holidays to everybody that's watching that celebrates, of course. Let me slide this fella out. Yeah. Ta-da. Finally here to add to the collection. This is an exciting day. I know the first thing I want to crawl with these giant tires. There we are. Look at this. Now gently, gently. There it is. What else is in there for me to see? Aha, so the instruction book. This thing comes with absolutely everything you need to run. In fact, what I noticed on here on the side, was it? Yeah, they have two versions of this, of course, if you want to see the white and the, the uh, yellow slash orange one. But I love this. Required to complete. Nothing, everything is in the box. Comes with the battery, an 88 turn brushed motor. That is going to be so slow. I wonder how it's geared, but that's gonna give it lots of uh, torque at least. I love the fact that it has this one little baby body clip on it. What, is there none on the back? None, I have to discover how that comes undone. Look, look, at, the, look at the suspension spring, boing. <laughs> I love these giant tires. This is the first reason why I even wanted to get this was those enormous tires underneath those wheel wells. I was wondering if it was going to be rubbing the body, but it's not a really big deal. What a cute little machine. Who's a big boy? Who's a big boy? <laughs> Let's take this off here. Well, I'll move it all the way around so we can, if you haven't seen this before, you can have a look at it. Oh my gosh, there's actual lights in the bumper. <gasps> I see they're, they're wired up. This is awesome. Wow, this is super cool. Good for Horizon coming out with a miniature axial that was on such a popular platform. Okay, so it is on a hinge system. Is that what I'm seeing here? I believe it is. Look at that. It just opens up. Oh, brilliant. Hence why you only have to lose one body clip instead of four. Wow, that battery is enormous. I thought this was going to be like a little like piece of Trident gum battery, but instead it's, what, 30C burst? Holy. Let's get into this thing. 
This has got me excited now. What do we got for milliamp hours on this? 350 milliamp hours, 2S LiPo. Wow, LiPo power. No, 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 no. Look at that. That is much larger than I expected. That is what she said. Come on, boom! I had to drop it in there just for old time's sake. Battery tray. Those tiny little springs on there, hey? That's what makes it so bouncy. There's no oil in those shocks at all. They sure make those shocks look amazing on the box, yeah? I'm like, oh, these are probably gonna be oil filled. But then when I read it, I'm like, no. <laughs> well, regardless, I wanna get a little charge into this thing here and get the radio out. Look at this, an AX4 radio. A fairly inexpensive, very light, like it weighs absolutely nothing. In fact, the truck weighs more than the radio. There are no batteries in it. Gonna be very straightforward. Do we have any adjustments on this at all? Oh, surprisingly I do. Oh, okay, so channel, wow. It's got a three channel in here. Okay, so I can see dual rates on there, uh, low, medium, and high. I wonder what that is. The bind is on there, channel one. <laughs> Going to install the batteries in this. Ah, oh, they slide just like a cartridge. So one, two, three, four batteries up inside the hilt, which will be perfect instead of in the bottom. And since it comes with batteries, I'm going to use the batteries that, it, that uh, is provided just so we can see is there any kind of quality to it at all. These are completely generic batteries. But if they get you up and running on Christmas morning or birthday morning or just coming home from work and you bought an extra truck for fun evening, then I think it'll be worth it. Get you by for the evening. Who knows, might be longer. Doodle-loop, good. Oh, blinky blinky. I wonder if that means they're running out already. <laughs> Here is the battery charger that it comes with. It's a USB LiPo charger. Never leave charging batteries unattended, especially LiPos, right? Because they can become hot or puff and they can actually cause a fire. Uh, I'm not saying that yours will cause a fire. I'm just saying never leave your LiPos unattended while you're charging because you do run the risk of any battery like that causing a, a fire. And just in case you're new and you've never seen anything like this, I'm actually using the balance port to plug the battery into the charger, not the actual power port itself, right? So it's just the balancing port for the two cells that are in there because each cell of lithium polymer has to be balanced with the proper charge for the battery to last as long as it can. Um, I mean longevity in lifespan, not just in running it that day. Of course, now I have it charging. You'll see that the red light is on. It's going to indicate green on top when it is charged. Hey, that's pretty convenient. It's almost charged. I'm just going to switch out those batteries to a more well-known brand. I just want to see if it makes a difference. And oh, I just happened to notice that it's not blinking. So it comes with pretty crappy radio batteries. Now, while I'm waiting for the battery to charge, look at this. This, this is what I'm talking about, about the tires. Look at the clearance, and with that worm gear in the axle, you are going to be able to crawl over so many things that most micros or minis wouldn't be able to do. I would call this a micro myself, even though a lot of people would argue and say, a micro is much smaller. And yeah, I agree, but that is pretty darn micro and compared to an SCX-10. So, overall, this, as soon as I saw the tread and the clearance on this, it made it a must have for me. There was no question about it. And I didn't even notice that it had lights before. Now when I flip open the lid, like look at this. This has like the ladder style frame chassis, right? On either side, the rails there, and that's a good sign. You can see all the screws go in through the rail. There's the motor that actually plugs into this AX, or pardon me, AE6 ESC. This is a combo. It looks like a receiver and ESC because you can see the antennas coming out. But there is where the battery plugs in. Nice and simple so it's not the, the uh, LiPo balance plug but it's that other cable I showed you.
You know, I've had a lot of commenters over the years say, you know, this is what's wrong with my show is that I cater too much to the people that, that aren't in the hobby. And I don't know, I would have to argue that fact and say, I think I create a show that I love and uh, hopefully there are things that you can gain both as a senior or mid-level or even entry-level hobbyist because, you know, curiosity always gets us, it doesn't matter where we're at in the hobby. And if I can drop a little bit of knowledge that I have to help some people out along the way, I think it's totally worth it. And since the battery is charged, I may as well go ahead and plug it in. Radio is on first, of course. There we go. Get that antenna and get my LiPo balancing plug kind of tucked in there. Antenna out of the way, and then I'll turn it on. Woo-wee! I love the headlights! That is a cool feature. None on the back, but that's okay. I only need two lights taking away from my battery power anyway. So there we go. Does the servo work? Let's see here with the, with the radio. Yeah. Everything works perfect. Throttle. Yeah. Two little drive shafts. You know, I still get people coming to my channel for the first time and saying, oh my God, I can't believe how far the radio control hobby has come from when I was a kid and I couldn't even get my little car to go through the grass. And now they've basically made anything you want, you can find in radio control. I think the only thing for us to do is really do some indoor crawling, yeah? Now what I've always loved about micro crawlers or mini crawlers or what have you is that you could always crawl with them in your house, at your office, on the desk, at lunchtime. If you're like a rock crawler full size, you're going to love rock crawling in miniature. It's basically the same thing. Look at that! Beautiful crawl! You just got to find your right line, just like in any kind of crawling scenario, right? Everything, of course, outside covered in snow right now. There's no real crawling going on outside because where I live, it's winter. Ah, perfect. Tons of clearance. Come on, buddy. There we go. There we go. Good crawl. Let's take it down the steep side here. Now, I want you to tell me right now, if, uh, you know, the only people that can tell me are the ones that are watching. Comment down below, <laughs> and let me know if you would crawl better than my sorry ass. <laughs> now, this is a small piece of my scale park from outside. You can see it's still a little damp from the melted snow. But this is going to be a perfect little piece to kind of test the articulation of this little Jeep and also see how it traverses over like a very uneven terrain. So let's, let's give that a try. Okay, so the same way we went up before. That's a good crawl. Easy to do. Then drop in off the rock. And I like that it has proportional throttle control. Like, it is dependent on how much I'm pulling that trigger, is how much power that it's actually getting. I remember when I had my first RC four-wheel drive, the, um, the first small 118 scale, it actually did not have proportional, proportional throttle control, which made it very challenging because it was either on or off. And, I, you know, it's kind of more of a toy status to me then if you don't have that kind of control. Come on, baby. Give me some juice. Yeah. When in doubt, throttle out. Come on, little dude, you got this. Right up to the top. Let's take it down deep. Let's go into this big hole down here and see if I can nose out of it at all. Yeah, deep. And then am I gonna hit the bumper? I could take the easy ways always, and I always, when I'm filming, I always choose the hard ways and make myself look bad, but I love the challenge of Driving one-handed and filming at the same time. A lot of people would say, why don't you put your camera on here? And it's because I don't use a small GoPro. I use a larger Sony Handycam. Well, not a Handycam, but that kind of thing. There we go. Look at that. Over no problemo. Okay, I only got one last test. Look at that. Woo! 
Oh yeah, who remembers these little guys, hey? When we had the racetrack here, that's actually uh, the fifth uh, the fifth scale boss racetrack that we used to have here years ago when we used to uh, race the Mini Zs. I still got mine. Look at these, and these middle cars, they're not even made anymore, I don't think, unless somebody can tell me that they do. They used to be low C's, super fast little race cars. Look at this, boom! I knew I would be able to get up on there, no problem. Come on, that's an easy test. Well, there you go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's unboxing video and you get to have a look at this little Jeep. I'm thoroughly impressed. I'm so happy to see another 124 scale on the market. Leave me a like, click, leave a comment down below, show some support for the new micro series or mini series, uh, and uh, let me know, are you interested in getting one of these? They do have the white one. Do you wanna see different colors or are you happy with what's available? Guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. As always, we'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures. Now go outside and play with RC, or if you're like me, stay inside and build one, or heck, just mess around. See you next time, bye-bye. Woohoo! <laughs>